On the next one, so now, ladies and gentlemen, what we've talked about is here's the sine of x, all right? So now what I'd like to do is go over the characteristics. Now, the characteristics of sine of x are going to be the exact same as the characteristics of cosine of x. So it's going to be very important for you to write these down and then be able to apply them not only just to sine, which we're going over, but also to going over to cosine. All right. So let's go and look at this. When we look at this graph, there's a couple things that we kind of notice. It, we know that it keeps on repeating. It goes on and on and on and on and on forever, correct? All right. Now, can anybody want to advise anything else that they kind of notice? Just anything in general about this graph, raise your hand, something that you can maybe say that would work? Yeah, OK. So you could say it has an x-axis. Um, and you can notice one thing kind of similar about this x-axis is that notice that the x-axis, um, 0, pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, every um, pi distance away from each other. Very good. Anything else about when it repeats? How long does it take for it to repeat? What is that distance? How long does it take for it to repeat? Well, from here to here, is it the exact same from here to here? No, so 2 pi, right? So after the length of 2 pi, this graph now does the exact same thing, right? So if you, gra if you took the graph from 0 to 2 pi, that's the graph. And then you just have to reproduce that. Would everybody agree with that? OK. So um, here's a couple things I want you guys to understand. First of all, if, when you guys remember dealing with transformations, when we talked about uh, transformations for quadratics in Algebra 2, you guys remember he had the A, B, C, or A, H, K, right? Shift up, shift down, shift left, shift right. You had A. Then we talked about that in logarithms and exponential, right? The H and the K shifted left and right. The A and the B did all that kind of stuff, right? Same exact thing. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're going um, to we're gonna use this pretty much the exact same thing. I'm just going to name letter or, or uh, call the letters a little bit differently, all right? But there's a couple things I want you guys to understand. We're also going to have transformations for the sine of x. So the transformations for sine of x would be a sine of bx minus c plus d. Okay. So let's go back again and think about what these all do. Remember a. That's going to tell us everything as far as reflecting over the x-axis, right? And we'll, I'll go more into this once we get into it. But remember, A is going to tell us when we're reflecting over the, x, um, over the x-axis. B, since that's inside the function, that's going to tell me when I'm going to reflect in the y-axis. C, it remember, is going to tell me to shift the graph left or right. And D tells me to shift the graph up or down. Okay, So it's just like H and K, but I'm going to use, B and, uh, use C and D instead. C tells you to shift the graph left and right, and D tells you to shift the graph up and a down. Axis, right? A will tell you if you're going to re be reflecting the x-axis. Now, they're also going to have an effect um, on your things. But there's a couple things I want you guys, uh, a couple things I want to talk about. So let's look at our graph um, sine of x. There's a couple key definitions I need you guys to know. The first one is amplitude. Okay. Amplitude is the, what we call the half distance, the half distance between the highest point on the graph and the lowest point on the graph. So let's go and look at our highest point on a graph. The highest point that we have on this graph is 1. The lowest point we have on this graph is negative 1. So therefore, our amplitude, the half distance of the highest point to the lowest point is what, Jessica? Highest point is 1, lowest point is negative 1. So the half distance of between those two points is? What is the distance between 1 and negative 1? 2. What's the half distance of that? 1. one. Very good. So to find amplitude, what we do is we take the absolute value of a. So you look at your function. You find the number that's in front that your function is being multiplied by. It doesn't matter if it's positive. It doesn't matter if it's negative. We know if it's negative, you, it'll be reflected, right? But as far as amplitude speaking, the absolute value of a is going to tell you your amplitude. And I will ask you for your amplitude. So you are going to have to find the amplitude for all the functions. So amplitude is the, highest and the, lowest point and the, lowest the half distance between the highest point and the lowest point. Yeah, but divide by two, yes. 
more easily said is just take the absolute value of A, find the number that's between there. But yes, when you're looking at a graph, that's the half distance. So in this case, my amplitude is equal to 1, right? And you're going to have to do that for every graph you guys do. Every graph, TJ, you're going to have to write in the amplitude, all right, if it has one, because we will talk about graphs that don't have an amplitude. All right, the next one is what we call the period. Now, this is something we've already talked about, all right? Um, I think Parker mentioned when we were talking about the period, how long does it take for this graph to repeat? And what we said was, well, the graph from here to here, from 2 pi, then it just does the exact same thing again, right? So we know that the period of sine and cosine repeats every 2 pi. Every 2 pi, Haley, the graph repeats. So the period for sine and cosine is 2 pi. However, if there's a transformation, right? Because we're going to be talking about graphing stuff where there's a transformation. If there's a transformation, we're going to divide it by b. So you take, to find the period, you take 2 pi divided by b, if you have a b, right? In our case, do we have a b? Do we have a number that's being multiplied by our x other than 1? No. So therefore, our period in this example is equal to 2 pi. All right? So bu, bu, bu. last thing that we're going to talk about is the last one is what we call the x scale. All right? And this one is very, very important when dealing with the x scale. And this is the other thing that we found out. Uh, the x scale, if you guys notice, between 0 and 2 pi, Jessica, this Jessica, how many points did I figure out? Between 0 and 2 pi, how many points did I figure out? Forget about kind of like the 0 thing. But if I'm starting here, how many points did I graph between 0 and 2 pi? 1. Well, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, technically, right? Do you guys kind of see? And now, what would you call this point? If I was going to say, what, what, would be the, what would be the importance of that point? Yeah, it's a maximum point, right? Remember parabola, you have like a maximum? Then you say, what would be the importance of this point? What is that? What is, what is this point? What would you say? Well, does it, what does it do, though, at that middle point? You're right, it is a middle point. What does it do, though? Is it not the maximum, it's not the minimum, but what does it do? It's crossing something, right? So could you say it's an x-intercept? Yeah. Then down here, this is a minimum point. And then here is another x-intercept. So if you guys notice that each one of these intervals, something important is happening. Would you guys agree? Every interval, I either have a maximum, a minimum, or an x-intercept. So if you're going to graph something, we don't really want to care about what these points are, because you can figure out these points. But why do we really care? If we just know, if we can figure, if we can just plot these four points, can we graph it just like I did? Yes. So the x scale, what the x scale allows us to do is to plot our most important points, the maximum, the minimum, and the x-intercepts. So to find the x scale, take the period and divide it by 4. right? Because in that first period, there's four important points. We have the maximum, the x-intercept, the minimum, the x-intercept, and the maximum again. Now for cosine, it's going to be different, but it doesn't matter. Um, all I want you guys to understand is what are the four important points, right? So if you can figure out that x scale, you take the period and divide it by 4. And what's even important about that is let's say your x scale, and here my x scale, so if I take 2 pi divided by 4, what is that? 2 pi divided by 4. 2 pi divided by 4 is what? Pi halves, right? So what do you guys notice? From here to here is what? Pi halves. From here to here is what? Pi halves. From here to here is what? Pi halves. From here to here is what? So the reason why I tell you guys what's so important about finding the x scale is, guys, if when you have transformations, you're going to have like crazy periods. You're going to have different um, x scales. So how do you know where to put the tick marks? Well, you find the x scale. And that's what you separate each tick mark with. Does that make sense? Sometimes your x scale might be pi thirds. So then you go 0, pi thirds, 
two pi thirds, three pi thirds, four pi thirds, and you just keep on going in those, rev and you go on by your x scale. Sometime your x scale might be um, pi. So you go pi, two pi, three pi, four pi. All right, your x scale is going to change depending on your period. Yes? Our period is always going to be 2 pi over b. 2 pi over b. Yes. Yes? Well, we haven't gone into an example yet of it. But all period, if you can just remember, period is the distance, the length, that it takes for the graph to repeat. All right? Now, we haven't gone over a problem that has a different period yet. But when you have a letter, when you have a number in for b, all right, you take their 2 pi and you divide it by b. And when we graph, ladies and gentlemen, here's the first thing we're going to do every single problem. We're going to find the, these three parts, every single problem. And guess what on your test? I'm going to ask amplitude, period, x scale, every single time. Every single question on your test, I ask for those three important points. So you need to make sure you understand them. And they are the exact same for cosine. We're just talking about the sine function. Yes? So for the 4, are we always going to go by 4 points over that change? Like the, on the x well, our x scale, that's why we do it divided by 4. It's always going to be divided by 4. Okay. You always take your period, divide it by 4. OK? You guys ready to do an example? Yeah. Example or check my Twitter feed. Okay. Wow.